Why do so many smart kids say they're not good at math? It's because the system sets them up to feel that way. Let me illustrate. Learning is all about building on top of knowledge, and so the education system is designed to stack knowledge like this tower. First grade sets up a strong foundation that second and third grades build on top of, eventually going all the way up through high school. At every level, the system depends on the base that's already there, being stable enough to build on top of. But in real life, that's not how it goes. If this tower was the education of a typical sixth grader, let's call him Jack. We need to make some changes because he was out sick way back in first grade when they learned how to add three numbers together. So in second grade, that meant he also struggled to understand three digit addition, but he did okay on the rest of the test and the teacher moved him on with the rest of the class. In third grade, his multiplication tables were a little shaky and the class kept moving before he could do it in his head. Then came two years of lockdowns, Zoom classrooms, and substitute teachers. On a national level, that chaos from COVID caused the largest decline in math scores since records began 50 years ago. And for Jack, that means he's completely stuck when it comes to fractions. So even though he was born with a natural talent for math, by the time he hit sixth grade, this is what happened. The thing that failed here wasn't Jack, it was the system. Take a look at this real data from sixth graders who took a math test just a few weeks before I filmed this. See how wide the range is? Their math ability ranges all the way from kindergarten to sophomore level. Now, if you were teaching this class, what grade textbook would you use? There are more kids who sit outside the range for their grade than in it. So teachers have no choice but to keep on dishing out lessons that play to the middle. Renowned educational psychologists like Benjamin Bloom figured out this fatal flaw in the way we teach over 60 years ago, but not much has changed since then. So in pretty much every classroom, you've got some kids sitting there bored because they already know it. Some kids struggling to keep up and barely one in five are actually getting the lesson they needed that day. Now, think about what Jack's experience will be when he reaches eighth grade and needs to do well in algebra to be ready for high school. How can he succeed if he doesn't have a good handle of fractions? That algebra textbook will only leave him frustrated and demoralized. This is how we end up with holes on top of holes and smart kids who say they're not good at math. What Jack needs is a way to address the specific gaps in his foundation, which simply cannot happen in a classroom where 25 kids take the same lesson at the same time. But it's not impossible. Thanks to breakthroughs in technology, the solution already exists. Today, learning apps are finally capable of doing what a traditional classroom never could. With a precise roadmap, it becomes easy for every student to get the exact brick their tower needs every day. For some kids, that means starting algebra years early. For Jack, it means sticking with fractions a while longer until his tower has what it needs to grow super tall. Either way, with app-based learning, your kid is no longer an outlier, no longer just a dot. They're getting a personalized experience that fixes their unique gaps and unlocks their potential. As the head of GT school, I see eighth graders all the time who just need to revisit a few fifth and sixth grade concepts and all of a sudden they shoot ahead. It's truly astonishing how many of our students go on to hit the 99th percentile because when every row has the right bricks, you can build a really, really tall tower. And I mean super tall. Welcome to GT school. I'm so glad you're joining us.